The city feels like I am in Germany right now. Good morning from Luxembourg, country number 16 for me, my third country in three days. I am very excited to be here. I have always wanted to go to this tiny country that's wedged in between Belgium, Germany, France. I'm literally 15 miles from each of those borders and I have literally 24 hours here. It's gonna be a cloudy day, maybe some rain. And I'm not even kidding, I have gotten about 45 minutes of sleep in the past 36 hours. But, you know, I think we're just gonna push through, make it a very fun day, see as many sights as we can, just walk around the entire city of Luxembourg and kind of go from there, Get go to sleep early, wake up because I'm on a plane going right back to Dublin. So I'm excited for this believe right now I am in the richest country in the world I know right it's hard to believe how could this small little country that's wedged between Germany Belgium and France be the richest in the world shouldn't it be something like Saudi Arabia like the UAE somewhere that has this immense oil money well no and the reason for that is in countries like that sure you have the ultra ultra wealthy but then you also have the massive wealth disparity the ultra ultra poor bringing down the GDP per capita here it's like you don't have like the crazy super rich but everybody is very well to do in terms of gdp per capita it's nearly one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is at least fifteen thousand more than the next closest nation there are three state official languages and it is luxembourgish french and german but of the three so far i'm definitely seeing french a whole lot more than the other two the city feels like i am in germany right now just because of the architecture the city layout you could have told me that if you would have dropped me in this place and guessed what country i'm in yeah i would have said germany which i'm thinking i'm finding it very cool and very fascinating i mean keep in mind we're also only about two hours from frankfurt right now also related to german culture is i have already seen many bratwurst stands and different sausages, which of course is one of the most German foods you can get. And apparently one of the specialty foods of here is this kind of variation of the German Bavarian pretzel. So interesting combination where you're getting a lot of German culture with the French language. One of the things that is hard to believe is that most people who are here on a given day are not actually from Luxembourg. Yeah, the majority of their workers live in one of the three border countries and then commute into work every day which is you know you don't get that for literally any other country to put into perspective just how small this country is its population is 660,000. if you were to make it a state in the u.s it would only be the 48th most populated state with vermont and wyoming being the two that have the less population little markets like the one i'm in right now set up in multiple different spots having food selling different gifts jewelry i mean this is great you can't smell it obviously through the phone but oh my god the smell of some of these pastries absolutely so good i think part of the reason why they have this set up is because it was literally just christmas and new year's and you see all the holiday lights but some of me is thinking this very well could be a year-round thing as well because it's attracting a lot of people. All of the activity here is taking at Place de la Constitution. My favorite foods in the entire world is waffles from Brussels. So let's try this. Not Brussels S, but it's still a really good waffle, better than one you get anywhere in the US. Sure, it doesn't have the same mouth-watering taste, but oh my god, I have been craving one of these literally for like a month now. One of my friends was in Brussels recently, sent me a picture of a waffle, and I'm like, oh my god, I need one back. Normally you'll see one of these in a whole city, but now this is multiple. This is a really cool atmosphere that they have. The energy of the city right now is really thriving around these outdoor markets. Even more little shops like it's almost like mini festivals these are happening it's now the third different one that i've seen 
Luxembourg has this really cool elevator called the Fathenthal lift that it's glass, it's outside, takes you from the bottom to the top of alongside the ancient walls and you get to see everything. So let's do this. When you are here, if there is literally just one thing that you can do, let's say you have 45 minutes and you gotta do something and that's it, make sure it's this elevator because this is maybe the most famous tourist attraction here. I find glass elevators the coolest thing, especially when they're looking out outside at a view like this. I'm literally just gonna take it up and down a few times for the fun of it. And one of the best things about it is it's completely free to use. One of the really cool parts is that you're literally just walking and then boom, a wall and the viewing tower from the medieval time. Like how cool is this? There aren't many other cities that these structures are still everywhere you go in the city. Liechtenstein, Andorra, Luxembourg. What do those three countries have in common besides the fact that they are the small European countries? Well, it's the fact that they were all fortified by walls. So like the ones behind me that are still up now and were built a thousand years ago, I mean, clearly they did something right that they were able to get independence and were not really absorbed into one of the present day countries of today. I mean, this technically used to be considered like South Netherlands, but you know, there was always a very distinct and different culture from the Dutch at the time. That's where like, why you have the language of Luxembourgish and you have just, you know, it's very different than the Netherlands culturally, as I've already mentioned. So yeah, strong walls, if you're gonna start civilization from scratch, pretend we're starting Earth like all over again, build these things. And the walls are high, they're thick, and if you wanna scale them in the ancient times, you're not gonna be able to. Maybe this shot will put into perspective the scale of the walls. Those are homes, and yeah, that's the wall going from the same ground level, but just look, it's like three times the size. Everything here is incredibly well preserved. I mean, some parts where you're walking, it feels like you're really stepping into like the 15th and 16th century. Love how high up I am right now. This city is incredibly well designed. And keep in mind that this was fortified literally hundreds upon hundreds of years ago. So urban planners back in like the year like 1200 1300 great job the country became independent in the year 1890 but it actually you gotta cut off a one from that if you want to talk about when the city really started being built the year 890 yeah over like 1100 years ago or a little bit over a thousand years ago like Wow, that's just mind blowing. You see this lion symbol everywhere in the city. And the reason is because it's been used as a symbol of Luxembourg since the 13th century as a sign of power and resilience. This time we go check out the main civilian walking pavilion. You know, it's no different than any other European central walking pavilion. I feel like every single one is basically the same. There are a lot of designer stores such as Gucci right there and that just signifies the wealth that's in this area. Another phenomenal view. And of course, ancient walls overlooking everything. Never been somewhere before that looks like this. The only connection I can think to of something similar is Heidelberg in Germany, which was a castle looking over something a little bit similar, a little bit of a stretch, but yeah, for me, this is something unique. This little valley that they have right here with the viaduct going across, being able to see the architecture, it really, the view, it's a very nice view and it just encapsulates kind of like the majesticness that the city has. You get views like this, not just throughout the entire city, but throughout the entire country. Just wow. It's something special. A tunnel 
that is carved through the wall. I wonder what this will be like. Brought to an elevator that led us right back up here. And it looks like up that hill, we can do a little hike. So we'll check that out. After hiking up the path alongside the walls, got a nice view, I would say. Got the residential area down below. And then a little bit out across the valley, the main city. Now this residential area is really nice. We see homes with actual backyards. And then look at all this open space to be able to just like play. You never see this in big cities. And yeah, let me rephrase that. I wouldn't consider Luxembourg a big city by any stretch of the imagination. But just cities in general in Europe, there's no like lawn space. There's, you don't have backyards, very clustered together. So this is a really nice setup if you're living here. I guess that right there is the only downside of living in this area because the airport's right there and you heard that plane. That was loud. Sometimes when you just wander aimlessly like I do, you end up in random hiking trails. We're about now a half hour walk outside the city. And you know, when I do this, sometimes it's like, oh, now the main attractions are so far and you know, it's gonna be hard to get back to, but no, I enjoy this because it gives me a whole different perspective. Um, I have no idea where to go. It's just one path that goes that way, another one that goes that way. I think the GPS said to go that way. So let's stop talking. Let's get back to the main destinations. I'm walking in the residential areas right now. Once again, very German. They are nice, small, quaint, single family homes that are all connected to each other going straight down the street. Each of them does have a garage, which is really nice. And literally once again, I turn around and in the residential area, just ancient walls that extend all the way down the road. Many of the single family homes here are three or four stories tall. It's because, you know, they're very like narrow. So they add up by building up in height. So they really have the same amount of room as like the average American home. Make sure you walk down here, down in the valley area, because this is so charming and very residential. You get to see how everyone here actually lives. Buildings like these are exactly what I'm referring to when I'm talking about a German and very Anglo-Saxon feel. I swear I'm in Germany right now. Like there's no way this isn't Germany. Like. I, I don't know, it just feels literally exactly like a German city in every which way possible. So culturally similar. All the cars are pretty much German. Volkswagen, you got Audi, Audi, Mercedes. We can tell we're walking into the central business district because you go from the Anglo-Saxon architecture and I turn around and you have these distinct modern glass buildings. It certainly feels like a very well-to-do community, but I'm not feeling immense wealth at all. It just feels, you know, very like upper middle class, but I guess that's really like what it is. There's no poverty, there's no lower middle class, but there's no super rich that will make everything like super elegant, super extravagant. So I guess it's pretty cool how this rather small place is technically considered by GDP the wealthiest place on earth. And one last thing related to their economy that I was just very shocked when I learned about this is so yeah banking is ultimately the largest sector of their economy and it's actually the third largest banking hub in all of Europe. Number one London, number two Zurich, Number three, Luxembourg City. Yeah, I'm shocked about that. You may be thinking, why in the world is the GDP so high? I mean, it's a landlocked country and what exactly is going on? Well, let me tell you what the industries are. Banking and financial services are the big one, but here is where 
Luxembourg is really getting its wealth. You want to know where Amazon's European headquarters are? Yeah, take a guess. I'll give you a hint. I'm in this place right now. Also, PayPal, Rakuten, Skype. If Skype's even still like doing anything. But yeah, those companies, European-based headquarters, right here. So that's providing a lot of opportunity. And one of the great things, all public transportation in Luxembourg, completely free. I've been walking around now for about three hours and I really feel like I've already seen all of Luxembourg. Obviously not referring to all the other parts of the country, just the main city, but it gives such similar vibes to, as I've already mentioned many times, multiple other German cities. And uh, just, it has a very lovely charm I love being able to look out at everything, but we still got a few more sites to check out. So let's get there. I really wonder how this city came about because most European cities have one central long river that's going through. Whether it's River Thames in London, there's the Danube going through many of them, the Rhine going through many of them. But in this city, this river is really like the only one. And look, it's not that big. So like what caused people to settle here originally and how did this community remain for so long for hundreds of years throughout history again to the point where they developed their own language too right behind me is the luxembourg Notre dame cathedral the largest cathedral in the whole country we we'll show you more of it but frankly i'm sick of looking at cathedrals after looking at them literally like non-stop every day in ireland so unfortunately, my time in Luxembourg has come to an end. Very nice city, extremely lovely country. You can see it's gotten a little cold now. I have gloves, hat, hood on, but you should come and visit, especially if you have an extended stay in either Frankfurt, Brussels, or Paris. I'm talking four or five days where you're in the city. Take a day trip out here, two and a half hours one way. Come on, that's not that bad. And you get to add it to a new country that you visited. Really, that's the main reason why I came to the city. But if you have no interest in being like, oh, I want to go to 35 countries in my lifetime or 100 countries. Like if you just want to see cities and experience them, then honestly, you can really just go to like any other German city. Um, there's ones that are much bigger that have a lot more flavor. Like this reminded me pretty much a lot like Munich. Uh, so maybe if it's in that sense, you can pass on it. But I still think it's very fun saying I was in the country of Luxembourg. And yeah, you can just get, it's just a new country that you've been to. So I recommend making this trip. Of course we had to get the sign. So we're getting this one. 